MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I am Gabriel Morenci. As does our conversation with uh, Lou from Gamblue.com, one of the sharpest MMA uh, cappers in uh, the business. All right, let's uh, continue our breakdown of UFC 201 from Atlanta, Georgia. We got Perez and Rivera on the card um, here. Uh, you know, interesting fight, basically a pick. Um, Eric Perez is a small favorite in this fight. Both guys like to scrap, so it's going to be entertaining. It's going to be a lot of shots uh, thrown. Both very active fighters. You know, Rivera, I think, is a little bit more powerful. And, you know, Perez was, you know, they wanted Perez to do well. They wanted to, to reach out to the Mexican market. He's okay. He's not great. I don't really have a strong opinion on this fight, Lou. You know, I'm tempted to take the over one and a half, but Rivera has been knocked out quickly before. But I don't think Perez can do it. If I had to bet this fight, I'm taking Rivera. Uh, yeah, we can respect that. Uh, for for us, the way I look at it, I can't get past the fact that Perez is that much younger, eight years. And I, I absolutely think that if he can weather the first round, the cardio advantage becomes his because he's a grinder and he has cardio all day long. He's recently switched. Uh, he's, he's been working at Alliance, which shows me the fact that he's hungry for development. And I worry about Rivera if this thing gets into the second or third round. Uh, no question for seven minutes I'll be holding my breath to see that Perez can weather that early storm. But I do lean Perez here. Yeah, I, you know, and I, I can't disagree. Like I said, the fight's a toss-up, and I, I get it, too. And I'll be honest with you, I've wavered, Lou. And I don't know about you, any time, like, if you're, if you're better and you like something and you change your mind, I think you're more often than not loose. Except you can't get locked in. You know, if, if you do change your mind, you can't get locked into a thought previously. But what I find when it comes to capping MMA, Lou, when I'm bouncing back and forth on a fight, it means I really don't have a strong opinion on it, you know? When I bounce back and forth, I run from it. And I watch it and yeah, try exactly. and learn for the next fight. Yeah, exactly. You know, I was looking at it, too. He is eight years uh, the younger fighter. But I, I don't love this fight either way. Here's another fight here with Scoggins and Uncle Creepy. You know, Uncle Creepy returns after an 18-month layoff, once one of the top guys in his weight class. Uh, I'd like to pull the trigger here. I think Scoggins is being somewhat overrated. People are talking about him like he's the greatest fighter ever right now. But, Scott, you know, McCall hasn't fought in so long. You've got the, the – he's always has personal problems. Um, you wonder about his physical uh, being as well. He always has injuries and surgeries to deal with. You know, we saw last week with Frankie Signs. I got burnt. I like Frankie, but the guy hadn't fought in forever, and he wasn't himself. You know, I want to take the underdog here, but I can't talk myself into it. Yeah, we, we respect Uncle Creepy, but we've watched numerous interviews in preparation for this fight, and he's talked about his shoulders, his back, his his spine, his knees, his fingers, every his hands. He can't close one of his hands or open it, and and he's surely wearing a lot a, a lot of uh, his profession with him. That said, I can't quite figure if McCall is trying to set up a big uh, underdog payday for himself. Yeah. He surely has dial experience and quality of opponent in his favor. That said, I will come clean. Scoggins opened 170. He's 245 now. Part of the reason that that thing went from 170 to 245 is the few couple of pennies that we put on him. I think Scoggins is, is earmarked for greatness. He's on his way up. And uh, after this fight, we won't see much of Uncle Creepy. That's just my opinion. Yeah, you know, it's too bad because Uncle Creepy he was once one of the best uh, fighters in the world at his weight class and the personal issues that he's had, the injuries. Um, it's interesting you say that because I tell you, you mentioned about having the guile and the, the veteran presence in the octagon. He also has the sort of street smart to do what you just said, Lou, as well. He could be playing people with all the injuries. And he, it scares me. No question, it scares me. Yeah, and he could be laying it down as well, which is interesting, uh, too. <laughs> he could be. Hey, you know, like I said, he's that tight. He's got that street smart about him. Uh, man, I want to take the underdog here. I, I really do. I, I really do. But I understand, man. Scoggins has looked real good as of late. All right, what, I like this fight here. Krylov and 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 short fuse. You want to talk about like hand grenades, man? We got a lot of hand grenades. We got a lot of missiles uh, on this card. A lot of guys are going to the hospital after. Like I said, I don't think there's going to be an after a lot of after fight parties on Saturday night after this card. 
Krylov and Herman, here's another fight. I, I think somebody's getting hit, and someone's getting hit real hard. I'm a fan of Krylov, but this is a step up in the sense that, you know, Ed Herman's crafty as hell, man. The guy's been around a long time, and uh, as we saw, the move up in weight has actually helped him. Uh, he messed up Tim Bosch pretty good. He did. Um, here's what here's what has me stumped a little here, and I, I lean Krylov, especially uh, with the with the movement of the line from uh, Herman opening plus 160s now plus 125 or 135, and it's that Herman is fighting up at 205 from 185, and Krylov tried his hand against Saul Pulele and another guy at heavyweight, and he's dropping down to 205. So the bigger man, the stronger man, I believe is Krylov. I definitely think he's going to want to keep it on the feet, and I definitely think Herman is going to want to smother that uh, – that attack of Krylov's, grope him, maul him against the mat, against the fence, and the over-under here at one and a half shaded to the under 130 tells me that I see submission or knockout in this fight. If it's submission, it's Herman, and if it's a knockout, it's Krylov. I like Krylov a lot in this fight. I'll be batting him. I see it at minus 160 right now. Uh, the only thing that concerns me with Krylov is he does get hit, Lou. He, you know, he has eaten some shots before, and, you know, say what you will about Ed, but uh, we know, man, the dude uh, does have power in that hand. No, no, no arguing. No, it, yes. absolutely. And, and uh, Krylov is still developing. Again, you got a savvy veteran against an up-and-comer here. Um, so that it'll be interesting to see uh, how this thing goes. I, I just think Herman is going one way and Krylov the other. I agree. I like, I like Krylov. All right, so we only got two minutes here, so let's blast through. We got Masvidal and Pearson. Ross Pearson's a dude. I like to sit down with Ross and buy him a couple of drinks and, uh, and talk MMA with him. Just because he's been so good to me over his career, I bought in early on the Ultimate Fighter and the British versus the USA deal. Uh, him and Andre Winter were very good, and I continue to ride Pearson. I've always really had a good, good feeling for Pearson's fights. Uh, but I think Ross is sort of running out of gas right now, and it's amazing. And one thing I've noticed about Ross, though, nine fights in a row, he's alternated wins and losses. So he's coming off a loss, so it means he would win. But one thing with Ross Pearson I've noticed, and I, can, I know this guy well, is that Lou, when he's got quick turnarounds, he doesn't win. He's getting at the point now, man. He's got a lot of uh, miles under the hood. He needs like six months to get ready for a fight. I think this is a bad spot for Ross. And I think physically it matches up well for a Masvidal who talks all the time about wanting big fights, but you got to stop underachieving, bro. And you got to actually win these fights. This fight's tailor-made for Masvidal to win. I think he does. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree. I think they, I think the UFC realized that Masvidal has been uh, in two or three coin flip fights, all of which he's lost in split decision form. And we could blame Masvidal for that all we want. A couple of those, arguably, he may have won. A couple of those, uh, Ally Aquinta. He just wasn't active enough, so maybe he's got a burr under his saddle finally, and he's he's a little bit PO'd and ready to go out and do what the UFC is hoping he does because they've they've hand selected a perfect opponent for for him. Masvidal is the is the taller guy. He's going to be much bigger. He's got tremendous reach advantage, and I I just think that all he's got to do is get this thing to the floor and just smother Pearson. It may not be pretty, um, but I think this goes to the floor for Masvidal's advantage um, and maybe he stands to strike to get it to the floor but why would he stand with Pearson it's the only way Pearson has to win I think yeah I think Pearson's just a little bit too slow right now too we got to get out of here Lou unfortunately we didn't get to Serrano but both me and Lou like Serrano minus 135 against Benoit Serrano world-class wrestler Pan Am game medalist 2008 Olympian uh, this guy you uh, know he can take anybody down, and he will. He's uh, minus 125. We've got to get out of here. Check out uh, Lou online at Twitter and, of course, the website Gamble. Thanks, Lou. Thank you, Gabriel. Have a great day. We'll take a quick uh, break. We'll come back with our video in a week and get out of here.